Curating a reading series is no joke. Uh, so let's give a nice round of applause to Sibel uh, uh, On the back table, there are some books handed out. I've got a couple copies of Fight Song, a couple copies of Termite Parade that are totally free, so feel free to take them. Although it would be pretty punk rock if you took other people's books for free and didn't tell them. Yeah. Uh, try not to do that. I'll read a very brief excerpt from Fight Song for you. Bob Coffin had been minding his own tawdry business on the internet. Wife and kids sleeping the night away. He was another half-drunken, lonely, sad, suburban father, sitting in his study, inappropriately conducting fevered searches regarding the shaving habits of certain co-eds who were okay with strangers witnessing the upkeep of their nether regions. Coffin gawked and googled and swigged vodka on the rocks from a sweating tumbler and munched nacho cheese Doritos. And a rhythm developed between these motions. Gawking. Googling. Slurping. Munching. It was the vodka that presented the first problem piece of the puzzle. You see, in his haste and enthusiasm, Coffin wasn't paying attention to the condensation from the glass how it made his fingers moist, how with the next clumsy dip of his hand into the Doritos bag, the orange dust plastered itself to it. Under normal circumstances, he would have identified the vibrant, sticking orange dust and properly cleaned it off. But he wasn't exactly in his right mind. A combustion slowly stoking in his body, and as the scene built to its dejected ending, he dropped his pants and latched his phallus in his fist, and the vibrant, gummy orange dust transferred and stuck to it like fluorescent sawdust. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, his wife, Jane Coffin, thirsty and awakened and wondering why Bob hadn't come to bed, burst into his office and observed the scene for herself. Bob yanking sadly his prick bright orange. <laughs> Shame reigned on Bob immediately. Coffin thought, two people can know each other so well and yet there are always new ways to disappoint your partner. <laughs> Bob quickly pulled up his pants and pushed his fluorescent orange penis inside. His wife Jane said before walking out, those chips are supposed to be for the kids. <laughs> In the, uh, the, the first couple remixes of Fight Song, there were these kind of commercial breaks uh, in the throes of the narrative. So you'd have four or five chapters, commercial, four or five chapters, commercial. Uh, I realized later in the revision process that that was a pretty stupid idea, but I did like enough of the commercials to kind of cobble them together into a little short story. So here's one of the commercials. They're all fictitious products. Who can you trust in a world where terrorists will probably poison your next birthday cake? It's simple. Nobody. And in these dark, desperate times, we're all looking for a bit of added security. Sure, the government is out there protecting us from the biddies, the global threats, upstart militias, crazed, bearded zealots, the next generation of guerrillas scheming to savagely end our world. But here's the trick question that only you can answer on behalf of you. Who's watching your loved ones' backs? What, are you supposed to trust that they're doing what they say they're doing? That's a lot to ask at any times, let alone these dark and desperate ones. So maybe it makes sense to enhance your guard, to ensure that your love perimeter can never be breached. That's why we are eager to tell you about the tough love registered trademark. Don't think of it as a stun gun. That makes it sound mean. Which it isn't. Not in the slightest, it's all about love. It's more similar to, say, a seatbelt or a bicycle helmet, yet another means to guarantee that those you love will make it through this crazed world intact. 
The tough love will give 50,000 volts to any of your loved ones when they need, or they think they need, to leave the safety of your safe haven. Does your wife like to go to yoga? Does your husband like to have a couple? Do your children have hobbies or interests that often lead them out of your safe, protected nest for extended periods of time? These sorts of casual encounters are often when we're at our most vulnerable, and thus they must be avoided at all costs, assuming you're the sort of person who truly loves your loved ones. Let's be honest, often it's our loved ones who don't see the threats of themselves. Perhaps they cackle and snort at the very idea that a terrorist will probably poison a birthday cake. Maybe life hasn't yet sacked their optimism. If this aptly depicts a loved one you love, perhaps you need to show them the way the world really works vis-a-vis -vis 50,000 volts of encouragement. Once subdued, there's no possible way they can be sullied or molested or murdered by the outside world. They'll be incapacitated on the couch next to you, ready to watch TV, totally out of harm's way. Often the mere suggestion of the tough love is an effective deterrent, just brandish it. Most people will cower at the feet of the tough love's immense prowess and never provoke its fury. So make your family's well-being your top priority and protect them from future chances of being sullied or molested or murdered by confining them to your home. <laughs> we all want to give love, but being a family often demands that you make the hard calls. Remember, anyone can give easy love, but are you willing to dole out the tough love? <laughs> <laughs>